whenever I see price action like this, I ignore the both side type movement. Usually it's FOMC or some kind of rate announcement type event. And that's what you're seeing here. When I see that, I ignore that wick and I ignore all these as well. The real range is here. This is manipulation. It's already done. It's not going to hurt you. Focus on this swing here. This high to that low, and I'm getting my range. Equilibrium is here. So if it's going higher, what's it reaching for? Well, it's going to go into a premium. And then this right here, this imbalance, I'm not really interested in that one because it's overlapping with that equilibrium 50% level of the high to that low. So I want to see it dig into a premium. So even if this is going to go up to go down, I want to know, do I have an opportunity to see it go up into this area here or maybe even up here? So we'll use the first low hanging fruit approach here. So we have a fair value gap there in balance sell side only. The market's going to want to revisit that area. This is exactly what I teach you. This is exactly what happened. Look at the bodies of the candles. Yes, there's a little bit of movement just above this candle's low, but look at the bulk of these candles, the bodies. They're staying within that range that's defined by what I teach you as a fair value gap in a premium market. What makes it a premium? It's above the 50% level. So it's gone up into that level here and it's consolidating. On the 15 minute time frame, here's midnight, New York local time. We had a fair value gap here, bullish order block, these last three down closed candles. That's one consecutive order block. It digs into the order block with the fair value gap, hits that during the London session. It rallies up. We create a fair value gap here. It runs by side here and then creates relative equal highs ahead of the New York session. So the market drops down, goes into the fair value gap here, into the last down close candle, bullish order block there, ahead of the 930 opening. Why would you feel confident to do that? Because we already have an energetic price run from London open. The market started at midnight and went where? Did it go up? No. It went down into an imbalance, and then there was a lot of energy off of that. So the market created a short-term shift in market structure here that's bullish. London creates the higher the low most of the time. 70% of the time, you're going to find that that is true. If your directional bias is correct. So I'm trusting that that low is probably pricing in the daily low. This retracement into the New York session from 8.30 in the morning to 11. This is specific to index futures. The market runs from the fair value gap here to the low of the fair value gap on the hourly chart to the high of the fair value gap on the hourly chart after clearing buy sell liquidity. On a five minute chart, there's a lot of things going on here. You can see we have a low, then we ran that low once more and then back down into the last down closed candle on the five minute chart. So there's an hierarchy of how the market's trading down into a higher time frame, to a lower time frame, to a lower time frame, all being supported by down closed candles within the bias that's bullish. And once fair value gaps are being closed in, the market goes higher, okay? Everything is being shown here in price action relative to time and price. Down close candle, that's an order block and fair value gap. There it is. You can buy this right there and trust that it's not likely to take that low out. Why? Because we already had a stop running event here. Low, lower low, sell side taken, reaction. Off the order block, we're into the fair value gap. We rallied once more. We created a fair value gap here. Drop down to that last down close candle. You can be a buyer there. There's buy side liquidity resting up here. That's going to be your initial draw on liquidity. So that'd be a first partial. But I want to show you the low to the high here. That's 50% or equilibrium. The market drops into a discount prior to that run up here. It's already done the move of manipulation, knocking people out. 
then off to the races. So this is a case where you do not need to wait for 930's opening to get that volatility, to get these type of manipulation moves. It doesn't need to go down here because it's already shown a willingness to want to rally. And this run didn't need to go over here because this low took out that low. So that is all framework and narrative. So all of that comes together. Now also couple that with the 8.30 news that took place in the dollar CAD. Dollar CAD, what is the currency's first pair in its name? Dollar. So if we're expecting, as I was hinting at on Twitter, it going down to a discount or running sell side liquidity, that means the bias is bearish. So if the bias is bearish on dollar CAD, that means that it's a risk on scenario. So the markets like S&P, NASDAQ, other foreign currencies are going to be easier to rally versus going down. So I don't need to go to the dollar itself when I have a high impact news event on dollar CAD, I can go right to that and cut to the chase and determine what the bias is for the morning session. Because if I'm likely to see lower prices on dollar CAD, that's the same thing as saying lower dollar, higher foreign currency. And when the dollar goes down, it's easy for SPOOs or E-mini S&P stock index features to go higher. And everything I've shown here is in concert with that idea. So hopefully this has been insightful to you. Hopefully it has helped you, obviously, in terms of using other markets for intermarket relationships, for bias, even though they're not correlated. Don't think that there's any kind of correlation between them. It's the fact that it's risk on risk off. That's all that it is. And I was focusing primarily on dollar CAD because dollar CAD had its high impact news drivers for today. A lot of you ask all the time, like, how do you know which pair to trade? How do, how do you know which one to pick? I'm starting that with the economic calendar because the economic calendar suggested that's where the volatility would be for today.